Testing, testing. Okay. I'm not I'm not on I'm not public yet. I'm it's private, but it ain't I don't hear no sound. All right, let's stand. Let's stand for prayer and uh, get ready for the word on tonight. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your word on tonight. Thank you for your people. Father, we just thank you that you've been kind to us. You've been wonderful to us all day. And Father, we give your name the praise and the glory in Jesus. Amen. Amen. Turn with me tonight. You may be seated to Genesis 45. Genesis 45 uh, on tonight. Genesis chapter 45. 
and I'm just going to read verses 1 uh, through 5. Genesis 45. Somebody shout, I'm ready for the word. Come on, somebody shout, I'm ready for the word. Genesis 45. Here begins the reading of the word. It says, then Joseph could no longer control himself before all his attendants. And he cried out, have everyone leave my presence. And so there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him and Pharaoh's household heard about it. And Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph, is my brother still living? But his brothers were not able to answer him because they were terrified of his presence. And then Joseph said to his brothers, come close to me. And when they had done so, he says, I am your brother Joseph, the one you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed and do not be angry with yourselves for selling me here because it was to save the lives that God sent me ahead of you. Amen. I want to echo echo uh, what I spoke on our virtual audience online on Tuesday uh, tonight to share the same message because I believe that uh, many of you need to hear it. And I want you uh, to open your mouth and say tonight, come on, everyone say tonight. We'll talk about the square footage of my impact. Come on, the square footage of my impact. You ready? I want you to understand that Joseph has had a very catastrophic life and experience. Um, if you could just imagine, and some of you have gone through this of your own family not even liking you. Uh, Y'all going to leave me out here. People that share the same blood that won't even speak to you. Huh? Okay, let's go here. People that you grew up in the same household with act like they don't even know you. And they, they didn't like Joseph because he had favor. And some people just have a problem with you. You ready? Because of what's on your life. And you didn't even ask for the level of favor that you had. I can see if you had a conversation with God and said, God, give me favor, but you never did that. You were born with favor. Somebody shout, I was born with favor. Go. So Joseph goes through some hardships. He's thrown into the pit. He has spent years in the palace. You listening? And the interesting thing is he made it out of it. And sometimes you need to just thank God that you made it out of it. Y'all ain't saying nothing to me today. Somebody shout, I made it out of it. Louder. Come on, louder. You made it out of it. And God would not allow him to go that low if he wasn't going to take him high. You know you are going high when you've been very low. This is why you can't die in your low moments. You can't give up on your low moments. You can't, th hey, you can't throw in the towel in your low moments. Because if if you knew what was ahead of you, this little light temporary affliction is nothing. 
right? He finally gets to a place in his life, guys, where he is second in charge over Egypt because he's promoted 13 years after he spends time in prison. He interprets Pharaoh's dream. And Joseph is over the food bank. So he's the one that makes sure that everybody, uh-oh. He makes sure that everybody eats. You hear me? And, and just for a few of you who would shout, God said, I, I'm getting ready to make you a distributor. Mm, come on here, somebody. He says, I'm getting ready to make some of you a distributor. What does that mean, Pastor Dwight? That you're getting ready to be the lender. I'm talking to you tonight. You're getting ready to be the lender, and you're not going to borrow. He's lending out food that he's been put in charge over, and he's an ex-felon. Listen to me, y'all. And God says, I'm going to take you from being a felon to understanding your favor. Woo! And one day when he's giving out food, his brothers are standing in line. And the Bible says he, he hadn't seen his brothers. I'm paraphrasing. He hadn't seen his brothers in years. The last time he saw his brothers, they were over him. And this time when he sees his brothers, he's over them. Wake up, y'all. The last time he saw his brothers, they were over him. Years later, they see him, and he is over them. Funny how things change. <laughs> this is why you can't leave people because of where they are right now. Because you never know who you're going to need in the future. If, if I was you, I would, I would go out of my way to make sure I don't burn another bridge. That I don't just casually be burning bridges because because you don't know who you gonna need. Bible says in verse one. Then Joseph could no longer control himself because he saw his brothers before all his attendants. Hear me. He cried out and he said, "Have everyone leave my presence." So there was no one with Joseph when he made himself known. Here's point one. Point one. God increases your impact based on the square footage of your rejection. <laughs> yeah. God increases your impact based on the square footage of your rejection. Listen to me. Do you know how wide the rejection was for Joseph? Do you know how much rejection he had to face? Hmm. Don't ever think that rejection leads to nothing. Rejection leads to promotion. And they started rejecting him at a, as a kid, and he had done nothing to them. Do you hear me? They throw him in a pit. He cries, rejection. They lie and say he's dead to his daddy, rejection. They sell him to the Ishmaelites, rejection. He's raised in another country, Egypt, rejection. He spends time in prison for a crime he did not commit, rejection. I don't know about you, but some of us would have gave up along the way. See, y'all want to act like you've always been as strong as you've been. You want to act like you've always been okay. But, but, but every now and again, you're reminded of the rejection that you had to face. Woo! Do y'all hear what I'm saying to you? And God said, I'm going to give you impact just because they don't like you. 
I need you to take a second and thank God that he's stretching your influence because people don't like you. Because man's choice is different from God's choice. Just because they don't like you doesn't mean God don't love you. I don't know what's wrong with some of y'all. You you know, I, I ain't got to fit in your circle uh, to be somebody. I don't need you to invite me to nothing so I can further the purpose of the Lord. When God speaks to go, I got to go. Listen, you... You got to stop allowing man to have all these restrictions on you. Telling you where you can go and where you don't belong and what you can do. Who are they? And God said, I'm going to increase your impact based, hey, on the square footage of your rejection. That means you got a lot of rejection. Y'all don't know what I'm talking about tonight, do you? But rejection leads to promotion. Oh, I want you to understand that this, this will be the last season they can even act like they don't like you. Because all of their friends are going to be talking about you. They, th this is the last season they can try to overlook you because God's going to place you in their face. Lord, have mercy. He's going to give people dreams about you. Uh, he's going to put your name huh, on people's spirits that, that don't even like you. And, and God's going to command them people that don't like you to mention you. You thought your promotion was coming by somebody you love. But your promotion is coming from somebody you don't really like and don't like you. Oh. The Bible says, Brother Greg, he lost it. He lost it. You ever been in a place where you just, you just couldn't handle what was going on? You just, you just lost it. He said, uh, excuse me, I got to take a break. I got to take a breather because I'm looking at the, bro the, the brothers that hurt me. I'm looking at my family members that threw me in the pit. I need a moment. Sometime, can we take a second? Sometime you try to be strong, but sometime you just need a moment. A moment to reflect on what they did to you. Oh, man. Bible says in verse 2, you ready? He wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard him and Pharaoh's household heard about it. Now, Joseph was outside. When he saw his brother, Sister Angela, he lost it and went inside. He went into a room, shut the door, and just started hollering, crying. He was crying so loud in this palace that the Egyptians outside heard him inside. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. That, that's a lot of crying with a lot of people around. You got to be really loud for me to hear you outside of this big, of this big palace. Which brings me to point two. God will stretch your impact based on the square footage of your tears. He'll stretch your impact based on the square footage of your tears. Do you know that every tear you ever released from your eye, God called it. He was right. Oh, I feel the Holy Ghost. I got to stop that. He was right there catching tears. And you shed a lot of tears. I'm talking about tears from 2002. I, I'm talking about tears from 2013 and 15. Y'all quiet. I'm talking about tears, hear me, from just last week. I, I'm talking about tears for some of y'all from today. I, I'm talking about tears from 20, 2009. I, I'm talking about tears. Come on, somebody. It, it, tears. And God said that I, I save tears. I save tears. I don't waste tears. I save tears. 
So while you think your tears are wasted, they're being saved. Oh, y'all don't believe me. While you think your tears are being wasted, your tears are being saved. Well, why would God save my tears? According to the Bible, he saves them and puts them in the bottle. Why would he save my tears? He saves your tears, you ready, as fertilizer. If y'all know about agriculture, then you know about fertilizer. Y'all ain't going to say nothing to me. And fertilizer helps stuff to grow. Do you hear me? Fertilizer helps things to grow. And, and God says, well, I, I got to save the tears from all of these past years you've been through to fertilize what's next for you. You don't know this, baby, but, but, but your tears from the last couple of years were, were, were fertilizing your future. And so the doors you're walking in now, hear me, you paid the price for three years ago with your tears. So I wish somebody would tell you that you don't deserve to be there when my tears from the last three years paid the price for where I'm standing right now. I wish somebody would say what I, what I don't deserve and where I cannot stand and where I cannot go and what I cannot do. Baby, if you knew the late night tears in the bed... If you knew the tears when I was driving to work, if you knew the tears of rejection that I carried into my adult years, if you if you knew the tears that I faced, come on, through relationships, y'all, everybody say amen right there. If, if you knew the tears that I faced when my own mama said she didn't love me, if you knew the tears that I shed when I was called dumb and called stupid, come on, here's somebody. See, 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 folk want to tell you how far you can go on the journey, but they don't even know your journey. They, they don't even know what you've been through. They don't even know the pain and the hell that you are currently facing. Baby, get out of my way. I got too many tears. Woo! I got too many tears. I got too many tears for this year. I'm talking about tears just from this year. You got tears just from this year. Huh? I feel like shouting here. That opened up some stuff for you, hear me, in 2026. Baby, you got tears that are just 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 going ahead of you. Tears that are tears, hear my shot. Tears. Tears that are just floating in the atmosphere. Tears that are circulating, opening up things for you that you could not even imagine. I don't want you to underestimate the power of your tears. Pastor, I don't like crying. I don't, need, I don't like crying either. But one thing I can tell you, your tears do, is why did God give us tears? Why do we shed these little water-like drops out of our eyes when something is hurting us? <laughs> he, if you look at the anatomy of the human body, God is amazing how he created us because, because see, we say, we say we serve a big God, but, but do you really look at the intricate details about how he created you? Who is man that you are mindful of him? It's he said, now, I'm going to give you tears because tears serve a purpose. Let's, 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 get beyond, let's get beyond you being sad. Or matter of fact, let me attach tears to joy and pain. So when they feel pain, tears will come out. When they're really excited and happy, tears will come out. That's what God ordained. And so now, God says, I got to allow tears to come out. You ready? Because tears release excess dirt. Oh, okay. Tears are a cleansing process. Oh, so whenever you shed tears, it's a cleansing. 
And you may not want that cleansing, but it's a cleansing that you need. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. So all this time Joseph had been crying, he had been cleansed. He also had a lifestyle of forgiving. Because every time he cried, he probably said, Lord, forgive him. Because Mother Carmen, he knew who he was. What like he was just in prison. I don't know who I am. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm gonna. He knew who he was. You know why? Because, can we shout? His daddy affirmed him. When his daddy put a robe on him, he didn't know exactly what he would go through, but he says, boy, even though your own brothers might take you through, when I put this robe on you, no matter what pit they put you in and what you go through and how far I get away from you, this robe going to symbolize, come on here somebody, who you are. So, they thought that if they ripped the robe up, that they would rip the favor. So they ripped his robe thinking that they would take the favor. But what they didn't know is that the robe didn't give him favor. The robe confirmed that he had favor. I want you to understand that whatever happens right now is just confirmation of what already happened. He had favor in the pit. Sister Kim, he had favor in the prison. He had favor when Potiphar's wife lied on him. Hey, he, he, y'all ain't going to talk to me tonight. That's okay. I'm going to just preach to myself. He, he had favor when he was being rejected. The favor never went nowhere. And sometimes favor can feel like failure. Don't feel good. But we talked on Sunday and we said that, that failure is favor in disguise. And God said, he'll stretch your impact based on the square footage of your tears. But I can't just tell you about the square footage of your, your rejection and the square footage of your tears if I don't give you verse 3. And then verse 3 says, somebody say, go deeper. Verse 3 says, Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still living? Pause, pause. Because you always remember people who were there for you. Where's my father? Because I remember <laughs> he was there for me. But his brothers, hear me, were not able to answer him because they were not, they were terrified of his presence. I told you about the square footage of your rejection. I told you about the square footage of your tears, but I got to get to point three. Some people will be shocked because you live through the square footage of your trauma. You lived through the square footage of your trauma. Let me tell you what births trauma. Do you know what gives birth to trauma? Drama. <laughs> drama is what bursts trauma. So his brothers create trauma. Daddy, he gone. He died. A ferocious animal ate him up. He's dead. Drama. They put on a play. They then take the prop, which was his robe, and sprinkled it with animal blood. That's a prop. Y'all ain't. Drama. They then bring it to the daddy and say, he's dead. He's gone, man. He, 
dad starts weeping and hollering, crying, thinking his, his boy is dead. Trauma. The other half of these sorry brothers say, let's sell them to the Ishmaelites. And they come up with an agreement, probably got paid to sell their brother to the Ishmaelites. Hey, that was on its way to Egypt. Drama. Let me tell you about the drama about this. God can get into your plans too. So while they're creating drama, God says, I'm going to allow this caravan to be your Uber. To get you to Egypt. They, they don't, they creating all that drama. But I'm going to allow these caravan of the Ishmaelites to be your lift to your next destination. Hey, yeah. You know, God will use the drama to bless you. Uh -huh. <laughs> Online, y'all need to holler in person. He'll, he'll, he'll use drama to bless you. The drama then causes trauma because he had to be thinking about what they did to him. So he's sitting in the pit. And he's with the Ishmaelites on his way to Egypt. He sold to the Ishmaelites, which means they now own him. And they can take him wherever they want to. He is property of theirs. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. He, they, they then drop him off, pay a fee, leave the boy in Egypt, not knowing that Egypt was the wealthiest city. Well, if you're going to leave me somewhere. Leave me in a place that I can potentially prosper in. I don't know who this is for, but whoever left you, left you in a place to prosper. Hey, y'all better wake up. Come on, are y'all asleep? Whoever left you, left you in a place to prosper. Oh, they thought they was leaving you out to dry and, and you was going to die, but they left you to prosper. And the drama left some scars and the drama turned into trauma. I don't know, maybe he woke up in the middle of the night and was fighting in his dream, saying, man, I, I don't want to be sold here. I, I want to be with my family. He, he had these, 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 these thoughts of what happened to him. And psychologically now, the boy should have been messed up. I, you're talking about seeing a counselor and, and, and he should have been really messed up. But he's still prophesying with trauma. I think sometimes trauma will help you give a word. Oh, oh y'all ain't going to talk to me. Some of your best books came out of the trauma you've been through. Come on here, somebody. Uh -huh. Some of your best coaching sessions came out of trauma. Don't play with me. Yes, Lord. Come on, somebody. Some of your greatest sermons come out of trauma. One of my favorite movies is Antoine Fisher. I ain't seen it in a while, but it touched me every time I see it. And those of you that seen Antoine Fisher, listen to me. Um, it's about a young man who grows up in foster care because his mother was on drugs. His daddy was nowhere to be found. So the foster care system takes him in. Foster care system takes him in. He's abused by those that are in the foster care system. As he begins to matriculate through life and get older, listen to me, he decides to go to the Navy to get away from the trauma that he grew up in. When he gets to the Navy, he meets a mentor, a psychologist, Denzel Washington. Denzel sits him, sits, him, sits him down and begins to counsel him because when he got to the Navy, he kept getting in fights. 
And so Denzel said, I want to get to the root. I want to get to the root of this anger. I want to get, come on here, somebody. I, I want to get to the root of why you are acting out like this. I, I feel an anointing today uh, that God's going to place on you to help folk get to the root of stuff. You you, you ain't just going to be acting stupid and crazy without me doing some psychological evaluations and some Holy Ghost evaluation. Y'all ain't going to talk to me. We need both of them to work together. Come on, somebody. I, I need to get to the root of it. And so Denzel says, you're going to do a series of classes with me. You're going to sit down with me, and I'm going to walk you through how you got to this point. He begins to tell them, well, when I was young, and they flash back in the movie, when I was young, I was abused, and I got touched, and they did this, and this happened to me. And, and every, time he, every time he brought up what he went through, he got angry again. He got angry again. He got angry again. And, and so now Denzel begins to unravel the work through the trauma that has happened in this boy's life. And, and so now, uh, finally, uh, Denzel, they, they, they get to some of the last sessions. They, they, it's time to go home. It's time to wrap it up. And, and Denzel says, all right, now this is our last session and he gets angry he says it's, it's our last session and he gets angry and Denzel says this he says but but here's what I suggest to you moving forward first of all you need to go back and find your real family and if you're gonna go back to find your real family you have to ask those that abused you where they are y'all missed it because they are the only ones, really, that would know anything. Y'all, have y'all seen it? Of where your family is. And so when he steps up to the door, he gets home. And hear me, his abuser answers the door. And she says, Antoine, and steps out to give him a hug. And, and because if you're not careful, an abuser will pick up where they left off. They, they don't care nothing about what's going on in your life. They, they, they just think because they're, they're, they're senile. Come on, somebody, they're narcissistic. And so they think that nothing's wrong because when you show back up, you to them, they're thinking you want to really do what we did before, but it was manipulation and abuse. And so she opened her arms and he says, I don't want all that now, no. Here's the part of the movie that blessed me. He said, no matter what you tried to do to me, I'm still standing. Oh, shy. You could not break me. But that wasn't just Antoine Fisher. Do you understand that you're still standing? Online, in person. Do you know? That you're still standing? Some of you grew up with your aunt because your mama didn't want you. You ain't going to say that to me. Some of you grew up with, your, with somebody you go with, with somebody who wasn't your dad because your real dad wasn't there. And, and no matter what you went through, you're still standing. I think we ought to take 10, 10 seconds right here and, and just open your mouth. And listen, don't thank God for no open doors. Th thank the Lord. Come on, somebody. Th thank the Lord that, that, that you made it through the doors that were shut. Woo! Come on here, somebody. Huh? You got to be mighty strong to make it through all that trauma you've been through. You, you have to be mighty strong to have made it through those ups and downs through the years. You had to be, I feel somebody getting this today. You, you have to be mighty, mighty strong to have made it through all of that hell. Woo! At the end of the movie, He's sitting down with his family that he never met eating dinner because hmm. he never met the side that loved him. Can I prophesy over you? This is for the rest of the year for you online and in person. You're about to meet the side that loves you. Woo. You're about to meet the friends that love you. You're about to meet those that are coming into your life that love you for who you are. They don't want nothing from you, no manipulation, no lies, no drama, no motive, no strings attached. You're about to meet the folk who really love you. Turn the volume up. You're about to make. 
Hallelujah, somebody. <laughs> Woo, I feel the Holy Ghost tonight. I see some of y'all sitting at dinner tables with people that you never knew existed that actually love you. And they want to know about your journey. And they want to hear about what you've been through. And they want to know how they can help you. And they want to know, they want to know if it's, if it's anything they can do to assist you. And they want to know. See, you've been around people a lot of your life, and they took and they pulled, and they wanted stuff from you, want this and want that, and they never gave nothing back, and they left you depleted, left you out to dry, and never told you they loved you. But that day is gone now. Even in this church, you're going to connect with people that just find out they just love you for who you are. And, and you, you're going to love it because you've been in so many environments where you haven't been appreciated. Do you know God will surround you with a group of people that will love everything about you that that group didn't like? Everything these, this group doesn't like, there's a whole other group that will love it. So he, 815, we're almost done. He had to reveal himself. Do you know, Latoya, that God can bless you so good that you'll have to reveal to people who you are? <laughs> the last Joseph they saw, Brother Greg, was crying because they didn't love him. So they did not know how to accept the Joseph they manipulated. Their last picture of him was screaming for help. And now they need his help. Woo! So I feel the Holy Ghost here. So, Sister Kim, they cannot handle that this is not who we saw last. He looks nothing like the young man that we heard it. So they're shocked. Like, oh my God. He, he, some of them had to start whispering. He should have died for what we did to him. He should be in a psych war for what we did to him. He should have committed suicide for what we did to him. He should have lost his mind for what we did to him. And here it is. He's standing looking us in the face. Hear me. Hear me. With love. Your enemy is not going to be able to handle how nice you are to them. In this season, the Lord told me to be kind and nice to people that I know talked about me. I, I got to say, I got a, I got a testimony. <laughs> a couple of weeks ago, the Lord told me to sow into someone that I know didn't like me. They never said it, but my spirit wasn't on. I know they didn't like me for years. I know it. I said, so, so into them, so into them. I said, I ain't. Nobody sewing in it. Man, you tripping. I did it. I said, what was that about? He says, it wasn't about the amount or nothing. He says, I want to see if you can sow into someone that did you wrong on purpose because that way I would know you were prepared for the next blessing I'm going to release. Because if you still got hatred and anger in you, then this blessing going to be messed up. But, but if you can sow in the people that you know don't like you as a sign that you're mature enough to handle the things of God that are next for you. And I hear the Lord saying, even if you don't like it, do it anyway. He's just, 
It ain't even about them. He's testing to see how mature you are. He already knows, but he wants you to know. He wants you to know where you are. Because if some of y'all are like, I ain't doing it, I can't stand them, I don't like them, I don't do it. No, then you ain't ready for your home. You ain't ready for this new vehicle. You're not ready for this job. You're not ready to be promoted because you got too much in you and you can't be promoted with all that mess in you. Because then you'll be bleeding on innocent people. And point four, God is about to reveal the square footage of your anointing. Because they didn't think he was that anointed until they saw him over Egypt. And Joseph tried to warn them when he was young and tell them, I had a dream. And the dream I had, <laughs> y'all were bowing down to me. He tried to tell them, how many times have you tried to warn folk that didn't like you about what was coming and they didn't believe you until it actually happened? Finally, we get to verse 5. And this one messed me up. He said this, and I'm done. He says, and now, remember now they're looking at him. They're afraid he's about to throw them in prison or hurt them. You know what the boy said? He said, and now, in this moment, do not be distressed. He's telling his enemies, <laughs> don't, don't be don't be worried about this. And then he said to them, he says, now, uh, don't be angry with yourselves. Let me, let me walk through it. Don't be distressed and don't be angry with yourself. So evidently, they were mad at themselves for what they did to him. And he's seen it. No, no, don't, don't be angry with yourself either. This blew me away. He said, don't be angry with yourself. For what? For what? For selling me right here. Don't be angry for selling me and putting me here. For it was to save the lives that God sent me ahead of you to prepare remnant. Now I understand Joseph was saying that um, Sister Addie said earlier, all things, all things somehow work together. <laughs> what you mean? They work together for the good of those who love God. And because he loved God, it worked for him. Which lets me know that if you don't love God, it ain't going to work for you. Which brings me to point five. I hope you can get this because this is going to be challenging for you. He said your impact is based on the square footage of your forgiveness. I'm done. Your impact is based on the square footage of your forgiveness. You will not have an impact if you don't learn how to forgive. You know why God took him so high? Because he forgave every step of the way. Woo! So nobody could tell him he didn't belong there because he forgave everybody that hurt him on his way there. Who is it tonight? Who is it tonight? Who is it tonight? Who is it tonight that you need to forgive? I, I thought this was about impact, but it's really 
It's really about forgiveness, ain't it? And in order for you to be free to go to where God wants you to be, there's got to be some forgiveness in you. Now, some of y'all can't forgive people because you had shared a phone line with them and they ran your bill up. And some of y'all can't forgive people because, you know, they married the person you thought you would be with. And some of y'all can't forgive people because they're in a place that you desire to be. You're mad at somebody because they got somewhere faster than you, and that may not be not, that may not even be the place God wants you to be at. And you're mad. You're mad because. They appear to be growing in a direction you should be in. Just mad. And you've built up unforgiveness because you made up something that ain't even there. We got a lot of preachers who won't forgive. <laughs> we got a leaders in the church that won't forgive. Hmm. We got some pastors that won't forgive some people that left their church 10 years ago. And they preaching every Sunday. They preaching every Sunday. Good, too, preaching every Sunday. And every time they look at that audience and that person isn't in there, they're mad. We got some folk that are singing worship Sundays. Won't forgive. Got some folk that are married, sleeping in the same bed. And been holding on to something that their spouse did to them five years ago. And they go on to sleep every night thinking about what they did five years ago. And they told their spouse, I forgive you. Some of you haven't forgiven your last boss because it was your boss fault why you got fired. But if you didn't get fired, you wouldn't have started a business. And you still mad. Uh-huh. Y'all ain't saying it to me. You still mad. At what somebody did to you. I made up in my mind this year, I ain't going to be jealous of nobody. I'm not going to hold on to any hatred in my heart for nobody. Because I realized this. Life is, is, is way too short. You know, you can be gone tomorrow, forever, on this earth. You can be gone tonight. In the next minute, I don't want nobody to, but this, this life is unpredictable. Paul says life is but a vapor. One minute you're here, and the next minute you're gone. I, I got family members right now. I don't even talk to no more. Not because I don't want to talk to them. They don't want to talk to me. And I'm like, what did I do to them? I want you to understand, y'all, you didn't do nothing. And don't fall into the trap of thinking that you did something. I had one relative tell me, well, you might as well consider me to be dead. And I was extremely close to them growing up. You might as well imagine me to be dead. You know how evil that is? To imagine me to be like I ain't even here already? Imagine me to be gone? And you want people to, to wake up because, you know, uh, death is so final. After you transition out of this body, there ain't no going back saying, oh, let me go do it. 
Y'all read scriptures about the, 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 the man crying out who was in hell. He was crying out. And he, he was trying to warn his brothers, his family, not to come to hell. But it was too late. I don't know who you need to forgive tonight. And who you need to let go and what you need to let go of. But your life is too precious to be holding on to that. I feel the Lord so strong tonight saying some of y'all need to call some family members up and just tell them I forgive you and I love you. Don't wait for apologies. You may not ever get one. But don't base you forgiving people on their apologies because nine times out of ten, you ain't never going to get one. But you can do your part like Joseph and say, Father, forgive me for what I held against them. Ho, have I shot. I, I, what I don't want to happen is I don't want us to shout in church on Sundays. All that unforgiveness just bouncing around with you. You're running around, all that unforgiveness running with you. you shouting and all that unforgiveness shouting with you. And you leave church before you can get delivered. And you get in the car, you carry it back home. And as soon as, you know, it's, it's really, 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 really bad when you leave church and then still angry at somebody. You, how you come into the house of the Lord? So that means that everything you did was in vain because you didn't come in with thanksgiving in your heart. Y'all better listen to me tonight. For somebody listening to me online and in person, forgiveness better be on the top of your list. All month long. It better be on the top of your list all month long. Forgiveness better be on your list all month long. If you can't find a list, make up a list and say, I forgive you just because I don't even know. I ain't even mad at you, but you know. I... <laughs> and don't let this road rage make you mad neither. Some of y'all mad about what somebody did earlier on the highway, and you'll never meet them. Just mad. Y'all see what they're doing now? I'm done with road rage, folk getting out the car and shooting. I was reading a story that was on the news the other day about uh, two young boys racing. An NFL player was racing on the highway and left the car on the highway and walked off and didn't care if somebody died. How can you, how you where is your mind at? To just walk, you, to just walk away to say, I don't know what happened. I didn't. And all of them walked away. And it, it, see, something's wrong when we're in a society where people don't even want to stop to see if you're all right. Father, tonight we thank you for your word. We love you. God, help us to have a forgiving heart. Whew. Let us be compassionate. Let us be long-suffering. Let us be understanding. Oh, God, we need you tonight. We need, we, Father, we repent right now. For every ounce, every dose of unforgiveness we held over the years, Father, we ask that you would release us right now from those years of bondage. We don't want to die with that in us. We want to be free tonight. Hey, 
I said we want to be free tonight. Hey, hey, woo, I got to go. We, I, I want to be free tonight. Woo. To do your will. Hey, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Tonight, as we leave this place, I want you to get your best Bible study seed tonight. Some of you needed this word. You didn't know what you would do without this word. You didn't know what you would you needed to hear. Unforgiveness tonight. We're sowing tonight at the following methods: dollar sign, generation of hope. Dollar sign, generation of hope. Or you can give via Zelle, uh, Generation of Hope Church One at gmail.com. Thank you, thank you. We put our uh, Cash App info on the screen, dollar sign Generation of Hope Church. It's online on the screen, amen. As our media team is working hard tonight, amen. Um, you can sow now, amen. And we thank the Lord that we're sowing into fertile ground. Uh, tonight, we just thank we thank God for church. We thank God for good people in the church. We thank God for His Word. We thank God that He's teaching us how to love. Hallelujah! In Jesus' name, Amen. 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 You are dismissed. Go in peace, and uh, the peace of God goes with you. Amen. Blessings to you. Blessings to you.